winter, though. Yes. This is a beautiful show. Not bad. This is protective stadium, so it's the calm before the storm in Birmingham, but we do have to prepare for an active night of weather, Sherry. Yeah. So mm. just make sure you have a way to get those weather alerts overnight tonight. We are weather aware this evening. Some cloud cover over the Magic City, but no rain right now. Had a couple of sprinkles throughout the day. If, if we get any rain between now and midnight, it will be non-severe. We're really tracking this active line of thunderstorms to our west. And, and by the looks of it, the line itself doesn't look overly impressive, but I have to point out it's the isolated supercells that create this line. It looks like an unbroken chain or a broken chain of uh, severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings, and that's what we're seeing across the West. You notice these counties that are highlighted here that are shaded in kind of that maroon color. That would indicate where we have what's called a PDS tornado watch. That's a particularly dangerous situation. These watches are only issued if we think that, hey, there could be the chance of some long track or violent tornadoes. So this is something to be watchful of through the evening hours. Now, this does not extend into Alabama, and and I'm not sure that it will because right now the dynamics are just much better in place to our west for some of those longer track storms. I'll get into what I think we'll see overnight tonight, starting with a breakdown of your hour by hour forecast because the timeline for this is 11 p.m. tonight through 9 a.m. Tomorrow we will start at 11 o'clock. You'll notice we won't get as much activity at 11 p.m. Remember, the percentage of rain refers to the amount of people I think that will be impacted in these time frames. So everyone gets some wet weather between between about 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. That's really going to be the meat of the storm system. Winds will be picking up out of the south southwest 15 to 25 miles per hour. Wind advisory already in place for those winds gusting up close to 40 miles per hour. As mentioned before, we could see a few of those prefrontal rain showers, but between midnight and two, that's when the main line of thunderstorm rolls into northwest Alabama from Sullivan, Hamilton to Double Springs from 3 to 4 a.m. Coleman, Jasper, Fayette into Columbus from 4 until 5, Jasper, Fayette, Northern Tuscaloosa, Summiton, uh, Warrior, even over towards Aniana at 5 a.m. and entering Etowah County. From 5 to 6 a.m., moving through Jefferson County into Shelby County along Highway 119 and 280 from the summit all the way down to Wilsonville. From 6 to 7, this line moves east of I-65. We'll already begin to see clearing back to our west. Thunderstorms from Anniston, Lineville, uh, Roanoke, Wadawi up to Heflin, and and then by 9 o'clock, most of the storm activity has moved into the Atlanta metro. And by noon, the sky is clear for us. But let's talk instability. Where we see these areas highlighted in green, that indicates severe weather is likely. In the blue, the atmosphere is still supportive of severe weather. So really, if you see the blues or the greens, that means that there is energy in the atmosphere. But particularly, I'm focused on these areas in green. This is some of the better instability that we've had overnight in the last few storms. So uh, notice it goes down a bit by 3 a.m., slides south of Birmingham, down towards Brent and Greensboro. And then the storm system will lose a little bit of that instability as we head towards sunrise. But that coupled with this lower level jet, which are those extreme winds just above us in the atmosphere. Those are going to be lifting to the north. So if the instability in the low level jet don't intersect at the same time, that will reduce our chance of having tornadic storms, but that could increase our chance of having strong winds associated with this storm. So we are going to include both strong gusty winds in excess of 60 to 70 miles per hour and even some tornadoes. So we will be focusing on those two main risks. Hail, not a big deal. Flooding threat pretty low for tonight. There is going to be rain in the forecast, though, after this. We are looking at more of an unsettled weather pattern for next week. Not going to be severe, but we are going to see rounds of rain. One of those late Sunday night into early Monday morning. Another wave begins to move in by Wednesday, and that rainfall could amount to two to three inches over the next seven days. But tomorrow, uh, early morning, I should say overnight tonight to early tomorrow morning is the only weather 